it's getting cold out, the animals will be starting to fur up. Well, not necessarily. Here's why. All right, guys, welcome back to a new season. Been a long summer. We've got uh, a lot of things done. We're almost done salmon fishing for the year, so uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get back to that topic here in just a minute about animals furring up, but uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, something a little different this year. I'm gonna run my regular trap lines and videos, but also I'm gonna put out some uh, uh, trapping tips for maybe some of the new guys out there trying to learn how to do some tricks and uh, learn a few things they want to get started and it's uh, they they just need a few tips on hey what do I do and they don't have somebody around that they can ask I was lucky enough I I had my dad when I first started trapping I still have him around he still gives me all sorts of good pointers so uh, but some people don't have that so I'm gonna see if I can put out a few good tips for you I'm gonna do a, a weekly video on tips they're gonna be super short and they are uh, gonna be I think on every Tuesday is when I'm gonna shoot for so anyways uh, back to the fur animals furring up so everybody believes that the animals start furring up because the winter or the weather gets colder you know winter comes and uh, so scientifically some people disagree with that and I'm not a scientist you guys know that but uh, so what they say is from the research I've done that that the the animals fur up due to lack of sunlight so they have the sunlight goes into the eye that goes into the pineal gland or something like that and it causes the animals to change from a summer coat to a winter coat or vice versa from the winter coat to the summer coat and uh, I know that some of that's fact because I mean obviously they, they, they've done the studies but also there's a lot of the old timers out there that that just believe that animals up in the high country will fur up quicker than animals in the low country and they're both getting the exact same amount of sunlight so I know that's a, a deal around here anyways our high country coyotes they get furred up uh, you know somewhere around two weeks sooner and they always have and so uh, that being said I don't know which it is but the best thing I can tell you guys is to maybe hold off maybe hold off until we get closer to that winter solstice you know as December 21st this year uh, it kind of changes every year but this year it's December 21st and uh, so wait wait a little longer in the season you know there's guys out there trapping coyotes right now today is like the 15th of October or I'm sorry no it's 11th of October so uh, and my grandpa he used to start trapping this time of year and he'd get some that were starting to fur up and some that weren't uh, mainly uh, on the coyotes we look at their belly their, their, their belly fur starts coming in real thick and turning white around here and so that's always a good indication but we know for a fact if we wait till like the first of December on um, the coyotes are primed up they could fur up a little sooner than that and it all depends on your area so uh, later in the season uh, later in the fall is is always better than earlier in the fall you'll get a lot of blue pelts uh, blue hides otherwise so that are worth a little less money so anyways a little quick little deal about that uh, my advice is do the research yourself but in the end it doesn't really matter you just kind of need to wait till the animals are primed up or or getting there before you start going after them there you only get that animal one time so might as well get the most money out of them anyways uh, what I'm gonna do is a trapping tip I've got for you guys this week is on uh, these rebar stakes so back when I first started trapping uh, well before YouTube existed uh, I had my dad and I had a whole lot of books and so I, I started uh, reading books and learning stuff from my dad but uh, one thing I knew I needed was rebar stakes for anchoring down my coyote traps and uh, 18 inch 24 inch doesn't matter but what I I had a hard time because I'd always have to go to my dad's house to, to cut them and weld them and do all this and sometimes I would just need you know another dozen stakes for the next day 
and to go run out to my dad with this one as a young guy run out to my dad's and cut him it might be a little more, more time consuming so what i've what i've done is i came up with this idea and if it already exists i give credit to whoever already came up with it. i I, did, I don't know anybody that came up with it but uh so uh, you can go to your like your local concrete supply store around here we've got uh i think we got like three or four of them let's see who this is business call i'm not quite off the clock yet for the year but um anyways we'll go to we got three concrete supply stores and they'll sell a number four rebar which is half inch uh they'll sell a number four rebar by 20 foot length or they'll sell it by the foot or they'll even cut it for you so that's the best option out there is to if you don't want to buy them from a trapping supply company and pay for the freight and all that uh, the cheapest way to do it is buy a 20 foot stick and then cut it whatever length you want or like i said have your, your concrete supply company cut it for you but what i've got i'm hanging out down here in the cabin is i've got one that's pre-cut just a number four and then i've got a 5 8 coarse thread washer and so this is the simplest way to, to make these stakes uh, especially if you don't have a welder so i'm going to set you down and uh, i'll show you how to do this okay so like i said i got this number four rebar uh see the splines on this just kind of traction which is what makes this whole idea work got my five eighths nut here just going to put it on there and i put it on there like that run it down past you know a half inch or something and then just take a metal surface anything works uh, i'm just going to try to use this i got my old trusty rusty hammer and you just clench that on there you can see how oblong that thing is that thing will never come off the benefit the good thing is is as you pound this down it will mushroom down it will lock it you can't you can never get that off I've had these that have been on there for 15 years so anyways uh I got one on the end of my beaver grounder same deal that one's been on there for a long time uh, I use it for the same system but anyways oh, it works great it works really good the uh, benefit is you can just make these in about make a dozen of them in about 10 or 15 minutes uh, if you don't have to cut them, but so all that being said, we got some traps here. Got to get these guys all boiled and clean this year. Got the pack saddle oiled up. Uh, it's gonna be an exciting year, guys. We've got uh, some new things that we're gonna do. Well, I'm new to the channel. I've done them for years, but we're gonna do some uh, trips with the pack horses. Uh, a few bobcat trap lines that way instead of with the ranger we'll still run our normal coyote stuff and uh we got a lot of beaver people wanting some beavers traps so it's going to be an exciting season uh stick around like i said i'll have uh, a weekly video of these trapping tips they won't be nearly this long just uh because i get to rambling on and kind of the introduction but i uh, hope you guys had a good summer and we'll see you through the rest of the winter running the trap lines <laughs>